We start to meet some of the players, they hang out in the club that we're in, we get friendly with them, we target them. Eventually, after we get to know them a little bit, we buy them a drink, send them over a few girls, make them feel good, then we move in for the kill. Hey everyone, Michael Francis here. Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to answer some questions that I know people are curious about. And let me make this clear, people. In talking about the mob, I'm not glorifying the life in any way. It's not a life that should be glorified. I've made that a point many, many times. So, another thing I was asked was, how we set up uh, athletes at that time in the gambling business that uh, many of us organized crime people were involved in. Now, I wasn't a, a, a bookmaker myself. For those of you that don't know what a bookmaker is, a bookmaker is somebody on the street that's taking bets illegally. All right, it's not a legal operation. It's not like in Vegas, not Atlantic City. Uh, it's not a, a legitimate sports betting parlor. Um, they're taking bets illegally. Just about every bookmaker that can cover a decent sized bet is somehow, some way involved in organized crime. Why is that? Well, basically for two reasons. Number one, bookmakers take credit. Remember, you don't have to put your money down when you go to a bookmaker. That's why they're so attractive. Sometimes they have a problem collecting. Well, they would come to us to help them collect. We we're pretty good at that, number one. Number two, they needed money. You know, so we finance them. Bookmaker can't go to the bank. It's not a legitimate business that you go to a bank, fill out an application and get money for. So they would come to us and we would lend them money. And then a third reason is because we wouldn't allow a bookmaker to work unless they were somehow involved with us. So I had 12 or 13 bookmakers that were under me at the time in the New York metropolitan area, Long Island, Manhattan, Brooklyn. And uh, many of them were taking bets with a lot of uh, pro and college athletes. And at the time, uh, yeah, we did put some of the athletes in compromising position. For some reason, many athletes are not that good at gambling. They would gamble, get in over their heads. They would lose money. And the only way they were able to pay it back is if they compromised the outcome of a game. Because remember, people, it's never about winning or losing. It's about the spread. And if you can man manipulate the spread by having a an athlete involved in the game, uh, a coach, a manager, a referee, an umpire, well, over a period of time, you can make yourself some money when you're, when you're working specifically on the point spread. How did we set up college athletes? Let me tell you a scenario uh, that I think you'll be able to relate to and understand. Okay, we used to hang out in many of the clubs in New York and Brooklyn and Long Island that many college athletes would come in and, uh, and hang out also. And I'll give you an example. Let's take basketball. Okay, easy sport, five guys on the court, easy to get to one of them and manipulate the spread. So let me set up a scenario. We start to meet some of the players, they hang out in the club that we're in, we get friendly with them, we target them. Let's call this one a guard, he's a senior guard. Eventually, after we get to know them a little bit, we buy them a drink, send them over a few girls, make them feel good, then we move in for the kill. Invite them over to the table, sit down, make them comfortable, I start to question him. Hey, you know, you're a pretty good player, but you know, you're six foot one. You're not exactly going to the pros. You know that, right? Yeah. Well, what is that school doing for you? You know, every time you play, you know, there's 18,000 fans in the stands and uh, they're not paying you any money. I know they're paying for your education, but you hear you're like a 2.0. You're not exactly a brain surgeon. What are you going to do when you get out of here? And I, I also know this, you know, how much money you got in your pocket? Oh, I'm broke. That's what you hear all the time. You're broke. Why? Your mother's riding around in an old jalopy, your girlfriend's pregnant. Why are you broke? The school's making a lot of money on you. Let me tell you what you're going to do, okay? I'm going to make life easy for you. You got 10 games left. You're favored to win Wednesday night by 10 points. Don't win by 10. We don't want you to throw the game. You know, we're big fans, but don't win by 10. Win by 6, win by 5, win by 7. Don't cover the spread. Who's going to know? Who's going to know? What does your coach care? As long as you're winning the game, he doesn't care. Okay, you do that, here's what I do. I take 10 grand out of my pocket, I put it on a table, I push it over to him, put that in your pocket. You do that for me 10 times, you got 100 grand. 
Don't put it in a bank. Put it under your mattress. When you leave school, look what you got. You got 100 Gs. What a start. Let me tell you something, people. Very, very hard for that young man to turn down. Very hard. Takes the bait just about every time. What has he got to lose in his mind? Not going to blow the game. I'm not going to tell on him. He understands that. You know, never going to tell on him. I'm a mob guy. He knows who I am. But here's what happens every single time. These are young men. And for those of you that play sports, you know this. It's a lot harder to underperform than it is to do your best. You're on the court. Everybody's watching you. Fans are cheering you. Your teammates are watching. Your coach is watching. Very hard to underperform. It really is. Okay, so he'll come back after two or three games, say, hey, Mr. Mike, I got myself 30 Gs. It's more money than I ever had. I can't do this anymore. Emotionally, it's driving me crazy. I'm having a real hard time. And I say, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop. What do you mean? We made a deal. Okay, you got seven more games to go. Unless you want to go talk to your coach, tell them how good you were playing. Want to tell your girlfriend, mom and dad, they'll be real proud of you. Want to go to the cops? I don't care. I get myself bailed out in five minutes. You're done when I tell you you're done. That's it. And I'll tell you, at that point in time, we own that young man. His life is destroyed. And people, I'm not saying this out of pride. I'm telling you how it really goes. This is how you manipulated and how you compromised these athletes and got them to compromise the outcome of a game. Did it happen a bit, uh, quite a bit? In my day, yes, it did. Is it going on now? I believe so. And remember this, uh, gambling today is a lot more accessible than it was in my day. Now, you know, I still speak at colleges. I still speak uh, to sports teams all over this country. And I can tell you, without a doubt, there's a lot of gambling going on. And these young men and some women are getting themselves in serious trouble. So that's how we used to put them, uh, uh, you know, in a, in a rough position. So if any of you young athletes are listening, if the parents, if the girlfriends, if the relatives of any of these young athletes are listening, uh, take heed. Watch who you hang out with. Watch out for bookmakers. You got to be very, very aware of the people that are trying to give you something for nothing. People trying to get close to you. Watch out for gamblers. They don't have to be involved in organized crime. Gamblers are desperate. They want information. They want to compromise uh, the outcome of game if they can. Okay, be careful. Don't let secrets come out of the locker room. Uh, injury reports, keep them confidential. I'm sure your coaching staff tells you that, but take it from a former mobster. This stuff is valuable information and can put you in a very compromising position, so watch out for that. So that's it for today. Again, michaelfrancis.com. You want some coaching, you want some leadership knowledge, business expertise, uh, please log on, log on rather, join our, our, uh, our crew, join our community. A lot of people are getting a lot of valuable information and insight out of joining the crew. And uh, if you want special access to me, you'll have that opportunity if you join the crew on a certain level. Until the next time, take care, God bless, and uh, be safe and be healthy.